Welcome traders to today's session in our online education series. Um, my name is Patrick Munley and I'll, uh, I'll be hosting the session today. Um, before we start, can I just do a quick audio check? If you can hear me uh, loud and clear and see a Tickmill uh, welcome screen on your, ch on your screen, uh, if you could type a Y in the chat box, that would, uh, that would be really helpful. Good stuff. Okay. Well, as always, before we uh, before we get going here, let's uh, let's just remind ourselves of the, the risks involved in uh, in foreign exchange trading. And, um, and as I say uh, each week, you guys are uh, are equipping yourselves to help mitigate some of the risks involved by um, by participating in these sessions and um, availing yourself of this uh, of, of this education. From someone who's had uh, 15 years experience in the markets. So, um, without further ado, let me uh, let me introduce myself for those who are, who are here for the first time. Um, my name is Patrick Munley. Like I said, and I've been uh, been in the markets for 15 years. However, I didn't uh, I didn't start out in uh, in financial markets when uh, after I graduated from university, I went into the world of consulting and after a period of working for a, a city firm in London, I, I left the firm um, with some partners and, um, and we did a startup, a consulting startup that experienced some pretty rapid growth. And after four to five years, uh, I cashed in my stake in the business and um, set about exploring my passion for markets. Um, when I got involved in, in trading, um, like many people, I experienced some um, some early good fortune and um, and managed to make some some pretty nice gains and um, and then I experienced what uh, what most most do. Uh, I uh, I took some pretty big losses, gave back all the gains I'd made and then some. And it was at that stage, really, I decided that uh, if I was going to continue, that I needed to take. Uh, take this idea of trading um, seriously and, and approach it as I had done with other business ventures. So I set out to identify a mentor, um, someone who uh, demonstrated excellence in the field of trading. I worked with my mentor for, uh, for every year to basically um, learn not just the technical game um, in terms of my understanding of the markets from a technical perspective, but more importantly, the mental game and the mental aspects which uh, which really drive um, trading performance to my mind anyway and uh, after a after a period of about 18 months I had uh, fully back tested and forward tested trade plan which was underpinned by a, a rigorous risk management strategy I then set about executing that strategy and uh, and since 2008 on, a, on an annual basis um, I've, I've delivered positive returns and um, the, my focus really in terms of my performance is really that on an annualized basis. I'm not concerned by the outcome of um, individual trades or even a string of trades, because what I know is that if I follow my process and I adhere to trading excellence, that over an extended series of outcomes, so months and years, um, my trading edge should demonstrate its uh, its positive returns and, and has, has done so. Since uh, so 2010, I have uh, I've personally been involved in mentoring other traders um, from complete novices to to former CME floor traders in uh, in helping them develop uh, effective trading strategies. And um, and since 2013, I've actually been managing external investor capital through a managed account service. Um, and like I say, that also has, uh, on an annual basis, has um, has delivered positive returns. So hopefully that will give you um, give you a flavour of where I'm coming from. Um, what we're going to move into today, uh, now that we've finished both the uh, the introductory and the intermediate stages of the, the education process, is we're actually going to start looking at trading strategies. And um, and specifically today we are. Um, we're going to look at my core swing trading approach. 
Now, before we get into to looking at the details of, of this approach, what I want to, to briefly do is just remind us that, or remind, uh, remind us that any strategy is only as good as the trader who's executing the strategy. Um, I could give you my specific trade plan and you could go away and, uh, and try and trade that. And over the same period of time that I, I, would, I could be profitable, you could end up losing money. And the reason for this is that um, what happens when people uh, take other people's trade plans without having done the uh, requisite work to develop the plan, and certainly the back testing element, which is key, is that the minute any strategy goes into a drawdown, so any, you know, once you, you're executing trades, if for whatever reason um, you experience losses, then without having done that work to develop the trade plan from scratch and, and the back test, you will immediately suffer, um, suffer a conflict in conviction. Because as, as, as any strategy will, and, and all strategies do, go through um, periods of drawdown or loss, it's at that point that all the work you did to develop the strategy, and certainly the, the, the back test, which is key, um, underpins your belief in the strategy and allows you to continue trading through a drawdown through to the next um, period of, of equity increase in your accounts. But like I say, if you haven't taken the time I mean, the, this core swing strategy that, um, that I'm going to walk you through today, uh, when I was doing the back test, I looked at nearly, I looked at just in one pair alone, over a thousand examples of the setup. So what that means is that I'd seen the trade, I'd, I'd identified the setup, I'd seen the, the, the exact setup over a thousand times in just one currency pair, and, and then I'd seen the outcome. So I had a, I had a new, or by the time I completed the back test, I knew what the, the A++ setups looked like, and I knew what the C- setups looked like. And, I, and then I was able to, to, to trade them accordingly. Um, without doing that back test, uh, the minute, like I said, the minute that any strategy goes into a period of drawdown, you, you would suffer that, that, that um, conflict with conviction. And so it's really important as we proceed through these, these uh, few core strategies I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you over the coming weeks, that if you decide that you, know, you think you can make these strategies work for yourselves, it's incredibly important that you undertake a period of backtesting, certainly before you would uh, you consider trading um, live capital. So now we've cleared, uh, cleared some of that up, what I want to do is I'm just going to walk you through. This is a, a, a trade plan document that um, I share with uh, students uh, who, I, um, who I teach at fxcareerswap.com, the online education business that I'm, uh, I'm the head of trading and trader education for. Um, we take retail trading talent and offer them the opportunity to trade on a, a live funded account. Um, and this is one of the strategies that I, that I teach, the core swing strategy. Um, and what, I, what, what we're looking to do here um, with this swing strategy is identify a setup. I, I trade this on the daily time frame myself, but we're looking for a setup that is basically um, identifying a stretch in the market. And when I say stretch, what I mean is that price has moved or has, has experienced a swing that has left the market stretched in one direction. And if we think in terms of the market ultimately seeking liquidity and balance, once the market tends to get stretched in one direction, then we can certainly anticipate a reversion to a mean. And for my, from, for my uh, template that I use for this strategy, I have uh, a proprietary indicator, which is a volume weighted average price. Now, the volume weighted average price is, is, is useful to me because what it gives me is a feel for the underlying DNA of the price action in a chart. Now, obviously, I'm trading on the daily time frame, and what I'm getting from the volume weighted average price is, depending upon the look back period that I use, I'm getting a reading from the market with respect to money flow. And the money flow um, is identified by the volume up ticks versus down ticks. Now, because 
uh, because foreign exchange is, is an over-the-counter product, so there isn't any one central exchange, you don't get the, um, the true volume that you would get if you were trading a stock, for example, that comes, uh, comes via, an, via an exchange. Um, but in Forex markets, it's basically ticks. So it's up ticks versus down ticks. So depending upon my look back period, the indicator will tell me whether we're experiencing money flow that's positive or money flow that's negative. Now, the, the, the actual close of the candle um, on the chart, you know, we could get a bearish close um, on, on a given day, but due to the nature of the, um, of, the volume, of the volume in the market, even though there's been a bearish close on that day, depending upon the look back period, we could get a read on the, on the actual money flow being positive over the period of time. And so to help, um, to help identify that, the, uh, the VWAP indicator that I use automatically colors the candles for me. So when, uh, when uh, this, this shorter term VWAP is a five period look back. OK, so over the prior five days um, of, of price action, if we've had more upticks than down ticks, the VWAP will be green. OK, over the prior five days, if we've had more down ticks than upticks, the VWAP will be red. And it just simply colors the candles for me to make it far easier for, um, for me to see what the current money flow is. The other tool that I use um, for this strategy is the um, stochastic RSI. This is just a generic stochastic RSI. This is again just to help in terms of giving an immediate visual read on, on where we are in terms of the structure in the market. So if, if we look at this stochastic RSI, I've got a, a, an upside of 75% and a downside of 25%. And what I'm looking for is if I'm looking at a short setup, if I'm looking at a, a to, to sell the market, then I want to see the stochastic RSI above the 75. Now, in and of itself, that's not a signal, but taken with my with the VWAP, and um, and then I'm going to talk to you about the volatility bands in a minute. Though I, once I get a, the three confirmations, then I do have a signal. So if I'm looking at a sell, I want to see the RSI stochastic above 75. If I'm looking to buy the market, I want to see the RSI stochastic below 25. Okay, so that, that's that's one of my first um, first checklists in terms of uh, confirmations for the signal. Um, the second, the, the, the primary one is that price must be testing the volatility resistance bands. Now, how these are defined are that again, it's using the VWAP overlaid onto the charts and I have a two and a three standard deviation band. Now the reason for using these is that once price moves away from the mean and tests two to three standard deviations above or below the mean there is about an 80 to 90 percent chance that prices will pause if not correct or reverse back to the mean. Okay now Again, the touch of the volatility bands in and of themselves does not constitute a signal. Okay, but what they does what it does do is it alerts me to the fact that prices are getting stretched in one direction. So I've got two tools at the moment that I'm, I'm focused on. I've got my the RSI stochastic, which I need to, if I'm looking at selling the market needs to be above the uh, 75 level. If I'm buying it, it needs to be below 25. If I'm looking to sell the market, I want price to at least have tested the two to three standard deviation volatility band above the central tendency, which is the 20 period look back. OK, so those are my first two. Uh, two signs I'm looking for. The third and the final sign is a price or, or a, a, sorry, it's a price action response that closes, if I'm looking to, to sell the market, that closes red, if I'm looking to buy the market, that closes green. So these are the three um, constituents of this, of this signal. So let me just go back, back, go, go back again over this. We, we want, if we're selling, we want to see it above the 75. 
we want to be testing or have tested the two to three standard deviation volatility resistance band. And then finally, if we're going to engage the market, we want a red candle, okay? This candle here could, could have been a red candle if we weren't using the VWAP. So let's just, um, let's just take a look and see. Uh, if we turn off the VWAP, let's just blow this up for a second. So this is the candle we're looking at here. If we take the VWAP off, you see, this was actually a red candle in terms of the daily close, but with the strategy that I'm using, I want to see, it, the, the VWAP was suggesting that there was still buying, buying pressure in the market. So I'm waiting for that, um, that close with the five period VWAP. So we tested into the volatility resistance. So we're just gonna walk you through this in terms of a, uh, a sell signal here. So we tested into the volatility resistance bands, prices stalled, and then we got a confirmation candle, which is the close below the five period VWAP. Okay, so once we got that close below the five period VWAP, that's a signal for me to sell the market. And what we're looking for is we um, we enter on the close of the candle with a the stop, a pip above the prior swing high or the swing high for the move. And then we're, uh, so what I'm generally looking for is a two to one um, risk reward or a, a test of the other of the opposing volatility band. So once we get down here and we test this volatility band, um, we can look to to take profit. And certainly once we see in this move, when we get down into this volatility band, we can see that the um, RSI stochastic is starting to show uh, a corresponding stretch in the other direction. So in this instance, the profit on the trade would have been, would have, or the signal to close the trade would have been the test of this volatility band. So it was 1.68 to one risk reward, okay? So does it, is everyone following along um, with, the, with, with, with the, the signal here uh, for the sales, sales signal? I'll just bring up uh, the entry rules here so you can see them. So the short trade, we identify the five period VWAP close below, which was, the, um, which was this candle. Let's just draw it in here. Um, that. And we'll just highlight uh the candle so we can see exactly the one we're entered on this is our entry candle here okay so we got the close below the five period vwap confirmed with the prior with uh price above the 75 and and turning down okay so this is uh this is our rsi stochastic above the 75 and now turning down so we've got two ticks we enter at the close of the candle, which we did, and then uh, we place stop uh, one pip above the high of the candle. So let's just get that there. We move the stop to entry once the trade moves one time in our favor. So you can see here we got that move one time in our favor. And we exit the trade at two times our risk or at the test of the opposing volatility band. It's, it's not an EMA, um, it's a volume weighted average price indicator. It's called the VWAP. Okay, so that was that, that's, an, that's an example there of a short signal using this strategy. Now what I'm just going to do is show you an example of a long signal. Get rid of this. And we're down here now. <clears throat> so the entry rules are exactly the same. We, we, we want price to be testing the volatility support balance. Okay. Because we know that once we're testing there, the market is going to, is, is suggesting it could be stretched on the downside. We want our RSI stochastic to be below the 25 level 
and, and starting to point up. Okay, so we get that signal, we test down into the volatility support band, we, uh, we have our price below the 25 level and rising, we enter on the close of our candle, okay, so we're entering a long position on the close of our candle here, but we put a, a stop one pip below the low of the candle, and we're targeting a test of the volatility resistance band or two times our risk reward whichever comes first in this instance we don't test the volatility resistance band but we get up to two times our risk prior to that test of the volatility resistance band okay so let me just run over this once more trade it down into the volatility support bands okay We've got the RSI stochastic below 70, below 25 and diverging positively to the upside. We've got a close above the five period VWAP. We enter at the close of our candle, a stop, one pit below the low, and then our target is either two times our risk or a test of the opposing volatility bands, whichever comes first. Is everyone clear on that? Can I get a, a Y in the chat box if you're following that? Good stuff. So, look, what I'm going to do now, as opposed to as opposed to just going through and picking um, cherry picking trades here, what I did prior to coming on is, um, as most of you will know, I am um, I'm obviously a, a resident market expert at Ticknell. And uh, it's the daily time frame, Jero. Um, and I, pro I, I produce a chart of the day or a chart of the week. And what I've done is I've I've just picked up a few of these from the, from the from when I started um, sharing them, and what I thought we'd do is we could go through, we could look at the setup and see how the how the trade played out. So um, the first one we had was was a sterling yen setup. This was a short, and hopefully I've got the chart. Yeah. So what we were looking for here, or what I'd identified using the, this exact same setup, was a, a test of the volatility resistance. We also had some. Fibonacci resistance in play as well. And again, once you, for the purposes of today, I'm just simply going to walk you through the swing, the, the swing approach. But if you've been, if you've joined in the other sessions, you will know that I have other methods for analyzing the markets. And once you've mastered the core swing approach, you can start to overlay the other tools and skills that we've worked on over the past week. Certainly looking at um, price and time retracements, price and time extensions. I use them regularly to identify and, and, and highlight the better signals that, I'm, that, I, that I see in the market. So here was a simple retracement. This is the, the live chart. So what happened was we tested up into the volatility resistance. Okay, so that kind of test the resistance. We got a pullback, but we didn't get the VWAP confirmation. Okay. The following candle gave us the VWAP confirmation. You can see that's the candle I've highlighted on this. Uh, this is the, the live uh, analysis that I gave. And so what we'd be doing here with this trade is we are entering a short position at the close of the candle. Our stop is a tick above the high of, of our trigger candle. And we are looking for a minimum, well, we're looking for two times our risk or a test of the volatility support band, whichever comes first. And we can see here that we tested down, we just, that on the day that we actually tested the volatility support band, we also got that two to one risk reward. We had the RSI stochastic above 75 and diverging negatively. We tested into the volatility resistance. Also, what, what the other line that I've got on here that you guys might um, might want to uh, to make a note of is this is the 100 period VWAP. So this gives me an idea. Bear in mind, my my trading time frame is the daily chart. The 100 period VWAP tells me what the trend is on the monthly chart. Because, as most of you all know, I'm, you know, I'm trading these higher time frames because what we're looking to do as retail traders is participate in um, the moves, the big, the big moves in the market, and ride the coattails of the big, 
the major players in the market, big uh, you know banks and trading desks. So what what, what we're looking to do is uh, as best as possible is align ourselves with those moves. And so I'm looking. I want I want to be aware of what the trend is on the higher time frame. And if I'm, I'm trading the daily time frame, so the monthly chart is my higher time frame. And so when I get this confirmation, once we got this signal here, there were some additional aspects that gave me further confidence in this trade. One was that we got the near-term VWAP, the near-term being the five period look back, was bearish. But we also, at the point I entered, the monthly VWAP had also ticked bearish. So we had two, so I had my trading time frame and the higher time frame negative from a volume weighted average price perspective and we got the the core swing signal as well so that just adds additional um conviction to the trainers and we got that two times risk reward okay let's take a look at another example um this is the aussie and uh this was a this signal this was a setup i was tracking here into the uh the end of september so as we got into the end of September, we traded down into this support area, waited, watching for the uh, RSI stochastic to flip bullish, which is what we got. We then got the close above the near-term volume weight average price. And so what do we do? Well, we enter a long trade at the close of our candle. We put a stop, a tick below the low of our signal candle, okay? And then we're either looking for a test of the volatility resistance band or two times our risk reward, whichever comes first. Now, in this instance, we tested up into the volatility resistance band and you would have got 1.5 times your risk out of that trade, okay? Now, bearing in mind, the monthly VWAP was negative, that would have given me extra conviction to exit this trade on the, on the test of the volatility resistance band, okay? Now, obviously, the, the trade moved on and you, you could have got, um, certainly got more out of the trade, but this is the, this is the key to successful, long-term successful trading is you have to stick to the trading plan, okay? So it's either, if, if you're trading with the higher time frame, then certainly you can hold these trades for that two times risk reward. But when you're trading against that higher time frame, so when the, the trend on the monthly chart was bearish here, I'd certainly, uh, this, this trade would be considered counter trend, okay? And so I want to just exit when we test the volatility resistance band. Does so that make sense? So when I'm trading with the higher time frame, I'll tend to let the trades run to certainly try and capture that two times risk reward. When I'm trading against the monthly time frame, I'll I'll look to take profit on a test of the opposing volatility bands. Okay, so that was the Aussie. Let's take a look at another one. We've got a Euro trade here. <coughs> so this was uh, the end of so this this is this candle here. So I was watching price action as we traded down into this support area. We got a test into the volatility support bands. We got the RSI stochastic below 25 and diverging positively. And we got that close above the five period VWAP. Okay. Cognizant, obviously, that the monthly VWAP is bearish. So I'm, I'm going to be taking two times my risk or a touch of the opposing volatility, uh, in this instance, resistance bands. So what do we do? Well, at the close of the candle, we enter our position, stop one pit below the low, and we're either going to test the volatility resistance bands or we're going to get out at two times our risk, whichever comes first. In this instance, we got that test of the volatility resistance bands uh, sorry, we've got our two times risk reward, and so we were out of the trade. You can see uh, this is uh, this is the chart I posted prior to this setup actually occurring, and that's what happened in the price action. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. So this was a Swissy. 
and um, you can see the chart here. Let's see the date. So the fourth uh, of the tenth. So this was the setup I was watching in the Swissy. Okay. So we traded into volatility resistance bands. We've got these three tails, these long tail candles, suggesting that there's a lack of liquidity above the market, meaning there's a high probability that the market is going to revert to the mean to attract more liquidity. And I wait, I watch the price action, waited for my confirmation candle, which I got. Now again, I'm trading counter to the month, uh, counter to the, the long term. Uh, the longer term trends, which is the, the daily, to, uh, the monthly time frame. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm entering on the close of my signal candle, stop the pip above the high, and I'm either going to exit at two times my risk, or when we test the opposing volatility band. And in this instance, gain gives you about 1.5 times risk reward. So you can see the light. This is the chart prior to you know the, on the day I posted it. And that's what happened next with the price action. And that's how I managed the trade. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. Uh, what have we got here? This is the dollar yen. <laughs> so, and I identified a pattern. For those who were involved in last week's session, I considered this to be a trend move and this price action to be corrective versus that trend, okay? We got stochastic down below 25 and turning upwards, positively diverging. I watched price action. We got that confirmation here with the close above the near term BWAP. And I put my position on. So I go long the Japanese yen on the close here. I have a stop one pit below the low of my trigger candle or signal candle. And once I got into the trade, the monthly time frame flipped bullish. So what I'm looking for here, ideally, is two times my risk reward. OK, so because I had the monthly candle bullish. Uh, sorry, because I had the monthly VWAP bullish and I got my signal versus what I consider to be a trend move and a corrective pattern, as we discussed in the past couple of sessions. Everything lined up here, so I would hold this trade for two times my risk reward, which is broadly in line anyway with where the volatility resistance bands come in. Does that make sense? So, uh, you know, I was risking 65 pips to make 130. Any questions, guys? I'll tell you what I'll do uh, now, as a matter of fact, is we can uh, we can actually take a look um, at a potential live scenario that's developing here. Uh, we haven't got the signal candle. We had a potential signal candle developing here. I was, I'm watching this um, Swissy at the moment for a potential short setup. We've got the monthly VWAP bearish. I consider this to be a trend move to the downside, this price action overlapping, so corrective. We, from a time perspective, we're in the ideal time window, the 61.8, uh, 1.618 to 100%. And I'm watching now, we've got this monthly, uh, monthly VWAP, we're testing up into the volatility resistance area. And so what I'm wa watching for is if we get a close, a red close versus the VWAP, so we get a close below uh, VWAP, and that will be a signal for me to sell the market. I'll actually be sharing this um, chart uh, today as my as my chart of the day um, is one that I'm watching in real time. So that's one that you guys can track, and maybe I'll follow up with at the beginning of next week's uh, next week's session. Okay, that so that covers the, the core swing strategy. I've walked you through a bunch of examples there. You can follow my trade trade of the day or chart of the day as it's called now um whereby i share these these setups um on a daily basis uh, like i said i've been trading this strategy myself for uh for nearly 15 years in live markets now it's been consistently profitable on an annual basis that's not to say that there aren't losing trades guys because there certainly are 
um, and you can get string a string of losing trades. But over the long term, this strategy proves to be very profitable, and, uh, and is, the, is my 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 bread and butter approach really to uh, to trading the markets. Um, if we don't have any questions, guys, I'll uh, I'll wrap this one up here, and um, and then we'll move into the uh, the next strategy uh, this time next week, next Thursday. So uh, I'll just give you a minute here to to type in any questions you might have. Just to clarify again, the, the, the look back periods on my VWAP are the five period is my near term. 20 period gives me the volatility that I'm tracking. And then the longer term, the, the monthly is a 100 period VWAP. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I'll, uh, I'll close it out here, guys. Thanks very much for your time. and look forward to uh, showing you another strategy this time next week.